I have a light that I'm using and I have this I'm using my phone as a bounce. So don't mind me, I'm gonna have my hands kind of out here giving myself a light source. But hello, you can't tell from this angle, but I am wearing a Venom shirt. I came prepared, you can see the teeth. If I push myself out like this. Well, we just got out of Venom the Last Dance. And thank goodness it was the last dance. <laughs> Cause I think I'm, think I'm done for a while, but maybe I'm not done. Maybe I'm not done, we'll see what happens. This is a spoiler free review. So we are not gonna get into spoilers. You are safe if you haven't seen it yet. If you're one of the few people that somehow hasn't seen it yet. I know I'm late, I was away. I didn't have an opportunity to see it till now. And you know, I wasn't in a rush because the reviews, they were not positive for this film. And I went to go see this film and I gotta say, yeah, I get it. I get why the reviews are not positive. So this movie is basically, I'll give you like, not with spoilers, but just a premise of what we're doing here in case you didn't know. It is Eddie and Venom. I mean, together they're technically Venom, but you know what I mean. I just, I'm gonna say that so I don't have to say like Venom symbiote all the time. Uh, on the run, they're on the run from a xenophage, which you saw in the trailer, which is pursuing them. What's a xenophage? A xenophage is, uh, well, in the comics, they're just a predator for symbiotes. They like can eat, they like eat symbiotes and believe. In this, uh, a xenophage is a thing that is working for Null to chase Venom because Null needs something from Venom. We're also dealing with the threat of Null who is trying to get out of a prison to get to, well, to get to everywhere, to conquer everything, presumably. At the same time, we have these military folks and scientists that are looking to study and capture aliens. Like, dun dun dun, Venom. So that's basically what's going on here. It's basically it. Um, you know, typical Venom shenanigans ensue. Some of those are actually quite enjoyable. Let's start with the positives. You know what? Let's be positive. Let's do it. There are actually some things that I enjoyed about this movie, and I will say, after Let There Be Carnage, if you were like me and you watched that movie, and you questioned all of existence while you were watching it, and you thought to yourself, how could Andy Serkis directing a movie be this bad? Because Andy Serkis is an amazing performer, and I would have thought, would have directed something that was actually quite good. If you went to see that movie and you thought, that and you considered walking out like I did. I almost left that movie, it was so bad. This movie is miles above it, I would say. At least it is. there are moments when it is genuinely entertaining and enjoyable, and there are moments where it genuinely pulled on some of my heartstrings, made me laugh. So there are some good things to be said. I think mostly the highlight of this film is a lot of the performers in this film. Tom Hardy, obviously, playing Venom and Eddie is always delightful. I do enjoy their relationship and I think there's still much entertainment to be had from that. The first half of the movie is actually pretty all right. I actually will say that I, I enjoyed it. You know what? I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, it's not enough to redeem the rest of the movie. The second half of the movie is not good. <laughs> It's just not good. It's not even, so here's the thing. We depart from some comic book versions of what's going on in this film. If you're a fan of the comics, you're gonna be familiar with things that we're talking about here, but they depart from the comic version of that lore, which is fine, honestly. In some ways, it's fine. In other ways, it's wasteful and disrespectful to some of the source material and the characters that we have. And so I will say that that is something that I didn't like. I feel like with symbiotes, there's a lot to love and there is so many cool characters that we have in that world, in the quote unquote venom verse, if you will. I, why we squander that, I have no idea. I have no idea. We did it in Let There Be Carnage. We're doing it again here. It's just um, disappointing. 
Also, the threat of Null, well, I kind of appreciate that they wanted to bring Null into this because I said, you know, if you don't go... I said this in my first reaction when they were keeping Null from us and trying to keep Null, I guess, some kind of secret. I said, if you don't have Null in this, like, what are you even doing, honestly, even though I was afraid of them touching Null. Very protective. And rightfully so, because they also apparently use Null without even telling the creators of Null and without even wanting to initially pay them. Fortunately, in the end, they did get paid. Uh, Donnie Cates and um, who's the artist Ryan that we Stegman. love? Ryan Stegman did get paid. So that is at least a positive from this. At least we got some creators that make cool stuff getting some money, which is nice. However, I also feel like the budget for this film was not as high as other films because, I mean, you can tell. I would say that this, the, the CGI and stuff still looked pretty good, but it is mostly in Las Vegas, and I feel like Las Vegas must be more affordable to shoot in than San Francisco, I think. There must be some credits or something. I feel like whenever people shoot there, it's like, ah, you probably didn't have much of a budget. Or, you know, you specifically want to do a film that's about Las Vegas, potentially. So, I just feel a lot of things are squandered in it. And while it feels like with all of the Venom films, there are cool ideas, but we don't actually ever do anything with them. So you just end up feeling disappointed by the end of the film. The movie literally ended and you said, that's it? I literally said that. It's true. I was like, oh, that's it. Because they actually set up some things Here's the other thing, like I said, the threat of Null is is just what are we doing with that? And I like how they said before this movie, you know, this isn't going to be the last you see of Null. This is going to be, like, this is just the beginning of Null. What beginning? Null's barely in this movie. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler. I don't think that's a major spoiler. For those but... who don't know, I don't think you just uh, said who Null is. Okay, so Null in the comics, for those that aren't familiar with Null, Null is the god of symbiotes. He is lord of freaking darkness and cause he's a cosmic villain that obliterates, dominates, decimates planets across the cosmos. He is a threat that was nullified by the symbiotes. They locked him up. They locked him away because he was that bad. Even though he's their creator, he's that bad. He is also the king in black. So what that means is he can, he has powers where he can, once awakened, take control of all of the symbiotes and control them as well. He's a massive threat. In the comics, we had some cool events. If you guys are interested in this guy, he's got a really sick character design as well. Uh, we have some cool events. There is uh, uh, Absolute Carnage and King in Black. Those are some events I would recommend checking out. King in Black, the end kind of peters out a bit in my opinion, but it's some cool, null, cosmic, symbiote madness. So if you're into that, that's, that's what we get. This movie, none of it. None of that. None of that exists in this movie. They kind of try to do a little bit of like an absolute carnage thing. Of course, you know, we don't have carnage because we killed him in the last film, but there's just a lot of stuff in this that feels very predictable, atypical, that's just not, it's boring. There's a lot of cool things they could have done. And every time I watch these movies, I'm like, why would you do it like that? Why, 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 why? It just makes me frustrated that someone else isn't writing or directing these films. And there are great performers, but then sometimes the film even gets in the way of that. I mean, the fact that we have Chiwetel Ejiofor in this film, how did we do that? How did, how, I hope he got paid well. He's so much better than this film. <laughs> yeah, I literally leaned over to Duck at one point and was like, man, he is so much better than this film. And then Duck said to me after, you said, when you leaned over to say that to me, I didn't want to talk, but I was literally thinking the same. I was literally about to like say that because I was thinking the exact same thing as you because he is so good in this. And actually there are some moments with his character, uh, Strickland, that Rex. are, pardon? Rex, who's also a Donny Cates, uh, Rex Strickland, right? yeah, yeah, who's also a Donny Cates Ryan segment creation. Yes, that are there's some moments that are genuinely interesting, but why they interpreted companies and people and whole storylines this way, I can see why they told they didn't tell the creators that any of this was happening because they would have been like, I don't think so. 
That's what I would have said. I would have been like, you're doing a what with my story? I feel like, why? And I know that some of this stuff can't be adapted. Uh, like, I don't, I wouldn't say you should do a direct adaptation. I'm not arguing for that. I know I talk about books sometimes and I think people interpret that as, well, you know, not, not everything can be exactly like the book, exactly like the comic. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a way that you could adapt it that could have been more true to form than what we saw here that could have been a better compromise between the two. And instead, we got Venom The Last Dance. I don't even mind the goofiness. This movie is goofy, and I actually enjoyed the goofy moments. So that's not even my problem with it. It's just disappointing is my problem with it. I actually like that Mrs. Chen is back. And I love a, I love a dance. <laughs> you know me, I love a song and dance. I'm like Venom, I'm a fan of musicals, what can I say? Also the fact that this was the last of the Venom trilogy, it makes me feel conflicted because I feel like we just wasted our time. We wasted it. And we had Tom Hardy, and I feel like we wasted it. But oh well, it's over now. We've danced our last. We've danced our last dance, and so for that, I'm slightly grateful. <laughs> I'm mostly grateful, actually, because now I don't have to watch anymore. And at least it wasn't as bad as the second one. So at least it redeemed itself slightly. Not as good as the first one. First one's still the best one. So that's how I feel about it. Overall, I would say I'm gonna give this one a two out of five. Uh, one out of five? One me. out of five for you? Didn't really care for it. I mean, I think it's entertaining. And I think there are some good moments. That's why I got a one. That's why I got a one. Yeah, I think I gotta give it a two for like some of the actual performances that are good and some of the moments that are genuinely interesting and made me think things, which was surprising. I went into this, honestly, not expecting much. And I was, uh, because I think I, maybe because I lowered the bar, I was a little bit surprised at how delighted I was. So that's all I have for this one. I hope you enjoyed this spoiler-free review, this immediate reaction. I'll probably be back with a full spoiler review and we can talk about all the things that happen in the movie. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that happens in it, I would say is pretty spoilery, which is why I'm trying to keep it light on the plots. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'll see you next time. And until then, friends, stay nerdy. Bye! Anything you want to add, Duck? Uh, yeah. Y yeah. Yeah, Doug's just delighted that it's over. Yeah. <laughs>